So welcome to a new conversation of this series of a possible decalogue for the institution yet to come. Through the notion of queerness of Jose Esteban Muñoz, we intend to imagine the potentialities of the art institution that we still have not known. We want to take this conjunction of circumstances to reshape the idea of the art organization and its value to society through some of the multiple functions that it can certainly perform. One of the things that the pandemic has prevented us from doing is surely gathering together uh, in spaces to share a space and time with other people. As we discussed in the conversation of the art institution as a place of encounter, this characteristic is something difficult to substitute through the digital, even more, even more so when it comes to constituting and working with communities. For some time now, certain art organizations have dedicated time and resources to explore and work together with the immediate contexts by putting the focus in community-based projects. Either through the educational departments, also known in certain countries as mediation, a word that needs to be used with certain caution though, or by transfer, transforming the organization into a community art project in itself, an effort has been made to refocus certain perspectives. The many strategies implemented to make the institution a place to foster and work with the surrounding community through artistic perspectives have been key to understand the art organization as a space beyond the touristic space that receives people in a one-off visit. For today, it is my pleasure to welcome two very admired colleagues that make of their institutions real spaces for conviviality, not only through a program in which one can participate, but also as a space of self-reference for certain communities. With them, we will speak about the relevance of the art organization as a place for community fostering. Bina Choi is the director at Casco Art Institute, working for the Commons in Utrecht in the Netherlands, where she engages with both its artistic program and the organizational matters as her curatorial and collaborative art practices. She has been in the position since 2008, during which time she has built upon the history of artistic research and experimentation of the organization by taking it as a micro society where artistic work and imagination prompt alternative aesthetic, social and political processes. Casco Art Institute works closely with artists by presenting art for making different roles, now and into the future. They study, situate, and mediate art in relation to the field of the commons, which means, above all, that they work closely with diverse communities. They engage with a number of post-space projects, which involve a number of collaborations across fields and that require a different time span of that of the event-driven institution. Amongst the present projects, that are working on at Casco are Traveling Farm Museum of Forgotten Skills, curated with outsiders, as they prompt in, in the website um, um, said by Bina. Common Grounds Song Value, curated with the Casco team, and Mapping Eurasia, curated with you, me. And one of the uh, very important projects that have been carried out in Casco by Bina also is the Grand Domestic um, project, which probably we will speak about later. Vinay has also been the faculty member of Dutch Art Institute and worked with Arts Collaborator. In 2016, she was the curator for the 11th One U Biennial. She's also the member of Academie der Kunste der Welt in Köln, where she presents One U lessons over the 18 May Democratic Uprising. So Bina, thank you very much for being with us today. And the other person I want to introduce you and thank for being here with us today is uh, Amelia Ranguren. Since 2011, is a member of Campo Adentro Inland, an association that deals with an artistic sensibility, with an important social content, with issues given in the rural world. From this organization, they claimed the need for a connection with, between the city and the countryside as the basis for strategies for a sustainable development. She is currently responsible for the artistic programming of Campo Adentro headquarters in Madrid, called the Center of Approach to the Rural, which is integrated in a peripheric neighborhood of the city. 
From there, they operate as a basis for residencies for artists, curators, researchers, and rural agents at large that experiment with art forms linked to social context with an ecological perspective, combining the individual agenda of the participating artists with the collaborative processes of joint creation. Its location also favors a very natural relationship with the neighborhood and its various communities. The long-term vision of this program is to blur the lines between country and city through artistic processes, cross-sectional to all projects and activities. Between 2016 and 2017, Amelie was uh, artistic director of Max Estrella Gallery in Madrid. Previously, she was responsible for the activities at the Federico García Lorca Foundation. And between 2001 and 2008, she was the coordinator of Espacio Uno in um, Reina Sofía Museum. So thank you to both of you. Um, you are both operating from very exceptional organizations that did not need a crisis to reinvent their positioning in society. And I think they can work as an inspiration to others to know how to operate in the smaller scale to affect uh, those around by degrowing somehow the ambition for the competition in the International League of Institutions, but without losing an internationalist view from the very specificity of the territory. So not only that you already have quite some um, innovative, inventive, alternative institutions to the mainstream, so to good, um, it, it will be interesting to listen uh, to your contribu contributions towards that institution yet to come. So Amelie, if you want to tell us first what you think that uh, institution that we still don't know should be, um, I will give you the screen to speak. Hello, thank you very much, Anne. Thank you very much to La Casa Entendida for inviting me, us, to talk today. Uh, well, I, the institution of the future, uh, for me, it's a little, it's a, like a, a haiku, it uh, will breathe in the clearing of a wood. Hmm? So it's an institution that would be outdoor, outside of the city, and yes, uh, think, uh, not thinking of this centralism of the, of the art in the cities. Uh, I, want to, I want to explain a little bit where we are in England now and what we are thinking about our institution, uh, our par institution, as we know, as you know. Um, as Anne said, uh, uh, Inland Campo Adentro was, uh, was uh, created uh, by Fernando García Dori in 2009 and joins agriculture, art, and, so and environment. And we try to vinculate art with social, social change. Uh, we are working in four lines, and this is what we are trying to, to keep very, uh, for the future, very strong. We are working on um, uh, knowledge, uh, we invest, uh, knowledge, educa knowledge, education, um, artistic production, and economic production. And this is the line that we have, that we want to reinforce uh, for these uh, next years. Uh, with economic uh, production, uh, what, uh, what we are uh, talking about is that we think that an, an instit uh, institution as a uh, Sinland, a program as uh, Sinland, can not depend as much as, um, as we did the last years of uh, helps, of, uh, um, of uh, grants, and start to have our own economy, uh, having our own products. And these products would be uh, agro agroecological products. So for this, we are we are uh, uh, recuperating a um, uh, village in the north of Spain, in the mountains, where we have a flock of uh, goats, and there we produce our cheese and we and other products. And uh, since two years, we have also in Madrid. It's the first time we do um, we do um. Um, an urban flock, an urban shepherds. Uh, uh, it's a it's a flock of of sheep, and these sheep that they are in the big park of Madrid in La Casa de Campo, 
um, also produce milk. That comes to the, the place we have, uh, the place Anne mentioned, mentioned the car, but where we do also um, uh, yogurt and other products. Um, with uh, this idea of the flow in Madrid uh, has been very, very beautiful because uh, with Madrid, as you know, it's a city that is made of people coming from a lot of villages of Spain during the 60s, 50s, 60s with the industrialization. All these people that came from the villages, uh, they, they had uh, rural activities and of course shepherds and agriculture. And so this, this flock, what, what, we, what we discover, what we learn, a lot of people, old people, uh, approach the flock, comes every morning and they spend the day there uh, talking with the shepherds, uh, helping them, and also comes to the house later when we are doing the yogurt or when we are doing uh, uh, the, the dulce de leche to help us. So uh, this this flow this, uh, has got reconnect these people that arrived to the city um, and forgot a lot. A lot of them uh, ha, uh, still have a contact with their village. They go in some go in summer, but a lot of them know they they lose this connection. So it has been a a, a way to reconnect them with uh, their their past, with what they used to do when a lot when when they were small or young. You know? so this is this uh, this has been a very a very beautiful, beautiful thing. So this production, it's a production of the milk, but it's also a, a very strong contact with uh, to help people to this do this uh, this uh, reapproach. Um, so the house uh, is a house that we have the car. I'm not going to talk about the village because the village is more is more isolated, but the house is uh, located in the in the center of Madrid. Um, it's a house with uh, with uh, a little house with uh, five rooms, so where we can do residences also, and with a kitchen and a living room and a, well. So uh, what we what we are doing it's a, a very strong uh, um, work with the neighborhood of this of, of where the house is located. Um, this. Um, this neighborhood also, it's uh, as, the, as, as, as people arriving in the 60s, 70s to Madrid from Spain, but at the end of the last century from uh, South America, Peru, and also as the mosque is very close from Morocco. So we have uh, three, uh, two uh, communities, the, the Peruvian and the, and, the, and the Moroccan, mostly Moroccan who we work with a lot. And through things we will, I think we will talk later through dance, uh, through kitchen, uh, cooking. So I think we will talk later about it. Um, and um, our idea at the beginning, when we started with the with this house, we, we decided to, we wanted to do artistic residence. But now after this pandemic, we are changing a little bit our idea, our idea and we, we would like to have like more people that in, gets involved to, to, to our house and lives there for longer than an artistic residence that you don't have a lot of time to, to understand the reality of the neighborhood or the city. So we, we are we are changing a little bit this. So now we have two persons that they live in the house, that they are staying in the house. And as this idea of, of uh, inland and as an inter intentional community, as a monastery in some times, no? that people come, gets, get, get, lives in the house and uh, gives and receives from the house, from us. So the, we are exploring this idea to have uh, always people, the same people living there or uh, during one year, six months, but more longer than, than one month or three weeks. Well, I think a lot, a lot of things will come on. Hmm? Okay, thank you, Emily. I really liked your proposition for the decola. It sounds very 
uh, motivating and stimulating, I wanted to say. And also it's great to hear about your new um, strategies for the upcoming uh, situation of your organization at this moment. And I think it's something we will get into the conversation later. So thank you. And Bina, um, if you want to share your ideas, thank you. Yeah, I also like to start with thank you for Anna uh, for uh, making this possible because it wasn't so easy to uh, um, connect. <laughs> uh, um, and also, I'm really glad that um, now I'm sitting uh, together with Amelia. Uh, uh, as I find inland almost as a like model <laughs> and and. Yeah, indeed, institution to come. Um, speaking of Casco, um, uh, well, uh, as yeah, you may know, in 2018, that we put the working for the commons as our motto with change in our uh, modus operandi, uh, where we're trying to put commons really as an organizing principle. But this is really like work in uh, progress, uh, meaning that uh, a commons, um, in simplistic term, it's like common resource co-managed by self-organizing community. But we also taking this notion to in you know, a world view where like uh, world system is largely divided through like binary view like public and private, uh, culture and nature, even like life and death uh, 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 became separate matter. While uh, in old days, there were like understanding of like site clinic um, temporality where uh, life and death are not separated as uh, now. So it's quite like broadly taken in our practice. Um, so it's a never ending journey of working for the commons to begin with. Yet uh, there are very two concrete ways that we are uh, engaging with um, the commons at this moment. One is territory based uh, approach. So place uh, as a site of commoning um, Becomes one of the like kind of basic uh, ways of work, uh, way of working, and and next to that, uh, what intrinsic to that is that place is organized together, uh, uh, organized together by uh, a group of people, information. So there are many. Uh, places and group that we are engaging with, but at the core is one uh, where our main building is, which has exhibition space in the museum quarter of Utrecht. And the other one is in the place called, or in the area called Lize Line, which was annexed to the city of Utrecht as it was developed since, 90, since 98. So before it used to be a farmland, just Greenland. And then now there are like 80,000 uh, people are living there and oldest people who have been living there is like uh, 20 years. Uh, they have been living. Um, so uh, Amelia talk, talked about the house in the city, uh, house of inland in the city, it's like, uh, a monastery and history of our building in the museum quarter uh, 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 actually tells that it used to be monastery or a convent of the um, uh, sisters and later it became a school for uh, children with learning disability then the gallery artist studio and uh, uh, Casco uh, which is shared by another institutions. And currently it hosts, um, I mean, it functions as office and then exhibition space, but we really putting, um, 
yeah, putting this function of this space uh, into a blank page. Uh, so the, during the COVID time, it has been empty and uh, wasn't used. Why our exhibition called Common Ground was going on, which we put forward this question about the future use of the building based on the, also like learning from the history of this building. And uh, yeah, I'm really wondering what this building should be uh, given that, um, I'm, yeah, I'm becoming more doubtful of the place or function of exhibition in our time. Maybe expression we can pronounce it. It was a tool for the modernity, and we need um, different ways of placing art. Um, so, uh, my personal hope for uh, this building is that it's occupied and used by uh, a community for living and working, and then art is situated in the practice of this community. Um, so the other one, um, in Leitzedein, um, our work uh, has been developing together with a collective called the Outsiders, uh, whose member include uh, Che, uh, who's um, actually coming from Barcelona, uh, an architect, and Asia, and Leo, and Meryl, uh, many others. Um, and uh, it centered, centered and centered around uh, old farmhouse, which is standing still in the middle of the, uh, um, the uh, uh, shopping mall complex. I mean, it's a shopping mall, but it's like <clears throat> uh, where like you do a uh, grocery. And uh, this uh, farmhouse, um, uh, uh, we found the farmhouse empty for uh, longer than 10 years. And we start investigating what happened to this farmhouse and why it's empty and, and uh, wrote a small story around it and published. And that became kind of beginning of our relation with uh, or trust for relation with a farmer who owned that farmhouse and we got access to using that farmhouse. But then um, one year after our use, that farmhouse was sold uh, to a developer. So it's currently being developed uh, into a restaurant. Uh, so for some, it is like very familiar sad story, how like possibility of commons immediately taken by a developer, um, like capitalist logic. But uh, our position is there's a no need to, uh, uh, no need to feel um, sense of defeat uh, from this as far as we continue our artistic engagement with this farmhouse meaning that we continue our story uh, around this farmhouse, but we using this opportunity to extend uh, our relationship with that neighborhood. So what's at the core at this moment is what um, we call like baby, or it used to be embryo. Uh, it is like miniature farmhouse, which is in store uh, farmer's bike. So bike is quite big. And this miniature farmhouse uh, contain um, different produce from uh, the community in the neighborhood. And this bike is moving around the neighborhood every weekend. Uh, and uh, so we want to build a um, network of produce, uh, network of producers and growers and, and the uh, consumers. Um, um, and hence we call it as traveling farm museum of forgotten skills. So, um, yeah, so this, I think, Maybe Costco would um, become 
or Costco will be replaced uh, with a traveling farm museum of forgotten skills, or Costco um, in its name sh shake. So Costco means of uh, space with possibility. So space only with a frame without the detailed uh, content inside. So it, it just uh, uh, remain as facilitator for uh, or infrastructure for supporting, facilitate, facilitating this kind of placemaking uh, with support of art. So in that regard, another thing that we are working on, so basically I'm, I'm talking about all these things that we are working with potential, with no uh, known result. Uh, so another thing that we're working on <clears throat> is a digital platform where we uh, like to um, uh, reinvigorate or uh, place uh, a selection of project that we develop, so-called like socially engaged project, which provides certain tools and model for a community, but which uh, only, um, yeah, remain as, um, I mean, whose life seemingly uh, stopped by the logic of presentation. So this uh, online platform uh, would introduce and facilitate in the end, uh, create some kind of ecosystem or uh, ec economic ecosystem for this kind of project to strive by meeting different communities. And this platform is of forming also uh, its way of economic uh, distribution. A lot to be developed over there, but this is uh, like um, uh, where we like to actively take on the uh, digital technology. Um, yeah, so why, uh, um, yeah, this play space uh, work uh, would require uh, like commitment and dedication to uh, a location, a local community, this digital platform uh, we hope to serve to also uh, bring some exchange among this uh, local uh, community. That means this also could function as some kind of advocacy group, because I think it is important that commons uh, as being localized also uh, able to give pressure and make change into the public realm and public system. Yeah. I think this is enough. <laughs> I think you can, no, it's, it's a great overview of, of what your current projects are, where they can be pointing at at this moment. And especially thinking about your two institutions, um, one concern that comes to my mind is during all this time where the social interaction and the care and the presence of people is so important. Um, you have been out, you have been deprived of that for three months now. And for the near future, um, it's also said that it can be, uh, the, uh, these lockdowns can happen in the next months to come as well. So how this situation affects your house as institutions, because you, a very important thing of both um, Inland and Casco, uh, it's how you're operating with those communities rather than what you're doing um, as an end, end, right? So how do you think that not being able to open the space um, Amelie, before, uh, before the conversation began, she was telling me that they won't be able to open the space until September. So there's this standby moment, but also once we open the spaces, um, there are certain restrictions we need to 
under which we need to operate. So how are you thinking um, that near future and how is that going to affect your operativity on the house as institutions and how do you work with people and with those communities? Um. <laughs> Um, if you, <coughs> for us, <coughs> the <coughs> excuse me, the um, the house is closed, but there is activity inside. We have a lot of activity because um, the, um, we organized a bank of aliments for people in the neighborhood. So this is this is going every week. And people is uh, uh, giving, bringing food, and now other people is uh, coming to pick up food. So there is this uh, this not public activity, but activity. Also, uh, we have the we have the group of consume. We have two group of consumes of the in the neighborhood, and the, um, in this moment in Madrid, uh, a lot of people is very engaged with this form of, of consuming, no? of, of local consuming. So um, every week also the, the, the product, the productors come to bring the, the food, the vegetables and the people from the neighborhood. So there is, a, there is this little activity of the house. It's true that we don't have a public activity. And also now after, uh, during this, these two months, we are also rethinking if we want to take again this um, uh, rhythm, this strong rhythm of activity, because it's true that um, perhaps we were doing a lot. It's like a wheel, no? You start and you want to do education with a seminar, a permanent seminar. You wanted to do all these. Uh, or the, the dances, the well. So we are also thinking that perhaps uh, we are going to reduce our, our activity, our public activity, and do as the residences do as f less things, but deeper, uh, working um, yes deeper in, in in two or three lines we want to open. Of course, the house, uh, as as you know, Annie. Uh, one of the one of the big intentions of the house is to work in the hospitality. So the the house is open to the people of the neighborhood that they want to use at these groups of consume and and uh, the, the 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 associations that they needed spaces. So of course they are open, but not a. Uh, open that there won't be activities open to the to the public as we were doing before and in your case Bina because in in both cases and maybe we'll get into that a bit later but cooking is an activity that it's important to gathering people around uh, maybe in Casco's um, um, experience it's more to do with how Bina has thought together with the team of constructing the, the, the uh, commonality within the team and the community within the team. But in, in inland, in car, it's, it's the food brings the different communities together. So that also, I think that, um, I don't know if, it, if it's going to be possible to continue with that, no? But before we get into the food as a union place, I want to hear from Bina how this uh, is going to affect the the relationships and how you you open up the space or you work with all those communities. Yeah, actually, um, uh, under like really strict lockdown, of course, we can't move even uh, you know out of the house. But uh, in like general like social distancing practice, which we I think should continue over a year or maybe uh, two years, or this has to be a way of living. The local and the neighborhood, I think, be, uh, would become really the, the, the base 
of your living and also I think working. So uh, in the sense, the way uh, our way of working uh, has uh, to be only intensified. And like at Costco, because we, uh, uh, our work is centered around this place or community, community based work, but we did many other things. But uh, along with this like necessity or like unregisterable slowdown process, we really have to reduce and degrow and, and, and focus more on these kinds of activities. So this actually put question to myself as well as, um, you know, I'm South Korean uh, living in the Netherlands. Uh, so I've been considering these two places as a home and how I can continue, for instance. And then we have many in our community who uh, have similar situation. Um, so uh, how to renegotiate um, this condition would be another. So that's why, like, uh, yeah, I'm far more into what, uh, like, seemingly, like, contradictory uh, um, matter before, like this uh, commitment and, uh, and engagement with um, the nature <laughs> and and to the technology. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, technology as a way to mediate. Uh, like a place and neighborhood based living. And in that actually I forgot uh, because Amelia already um, uh, laid out very well about what Inland is doing, but in uh, speaking of place, uh, actually we need to um, cultivate more and more the better, more harmonious relationship between the urban and the rural. Um, yeah. Thank you, Vina. I'm, it's, it's funny because I resist. I think technology is like a, um, a combination or a complement of, of the presence of the analogic. And somehow I resist myself to, to think of technology as a substitute for uh, mediation no? in something mm. so much rooted in what relationships are and Mm -hmm. After these three months mediating all the time through the screen, is some, there's something about affects and emotions that escape, that you don't get to touch. No? And that's why <clears throat> I was wondering so much um, about your, your projects. And although you have other strands that are not only community, I think um, there's something there that, Technology won't be able, maybe technology will be able to facilitate certain things, but not uh, certainly the affects that you put forward. Um, the community building, I believe, and sometimes community also means gathering around space or making a space, uh, own a space, no? Somehow. And um, in that sense, and from very different perspectives, as I was saying, um, the, and maybe that union between, between the urban and the rural, as you were saying, is a whole implementation of, of food no? and the cooking and how you have used that strategy as well to generate communities and to make everyone um, comfortable in your spaces, then maybe sometimes we think of the art institution or the arts um, organization as something very exclusive. So I wanted to know if, well, from your words, um, how you have been thinking about food and cooking and what, what has it served for in your um, projects and also what's coming up with that, no? Um, and as I said before, in very different perspectives, because um, from Casco, uh, there's, uh, I'm going to leave aside a, bit, a little bit of community issue or maybe make more reinforcements because the first community 
you are creating in Casco, it's the team in itself, no? In how you maybe um, uh, change your roles or how you you cook together. I think I don't know if that's still going on. So maybe food as a um, way to channel our horizontality and our, our community building. So if you want to contribute to that idea. Um, yeah, we, we are really a tiny team. Um, uh, I think we are at the also crossroad uh, where we really need to check in our capacity of or, or the necessity of growing or degrowing our team. So average, we are six. And I think we need to be more determined whether we would go small or uh, bigger. <laughs> um, um, and yeah, like, yeah, I, I really like to thank you that you, you uh, give this recognition that we are working on the team as community practice. But, um, um, it has been really important, I think, to realize that this team would ever remain as the team. <laughs> uh, and that is actually um, maybe one of the most important uh, um, issue, I mean, most important uh, aspect uh, to work on this practice team as a community. So allow them, allow ourselves to be uh, uh, part of community or which, which we call ecosystem uh, instead of remaining as waged workers. Um, uh, and yeah, in terms of food, um, yeah, we like, we have two um, chef, who, with whom we had been growing together. I mean, each one, uh, Asia who's part of the, this outsider collective and she, she's artist and chef. And another, Mari Pikanen, she uh, is activist and chef. And then now they became uh, very um, respected and, and, and popular uh, caterer for different uh, art events. Um, uh, yeah, but I think eventually food for us is to um, uh, think of, uh, yeah, well, uh, it is to diminish the uh, dependency on money, dependency on finance. So like, like, um, like uh, Maria Mies or uh, Vandana Shiva talks about uh, talks as a like subsistent economy and also in that like uh, in different kinds of common resource uh, uh, like resource that makes a commons uh, fundamental thing is those that are vital to life and food is such thing yeah Emily, you want to jump in and tell us about how I think that, I mean, the idea I have of, of car, it's quite um, like a place that unifies a lot of people, the kitchen. Hmm. Well, yesterday we have uh, this, uh, this uh, Gonzalo who is going to help us during <clears throat> with the radio until September. And the first question we ask him is he, if he likes to cook. So really uh, a lot of things happen around the kitchen for us is well um we, we, of course we have to to there is a lot of uh, we are a team and we have to eat uh, each uh, each day so it's an important moment also and uh, we every friday uh, one and, and uh, one just uh, before the pandemic uh, we used to invite some someone from the neighborhood to cook uh, in the house, and it was an open menu, so people could come uh, from, from our friends or from the artistic world of, of the neighborhood. We were around 
20, per, uh, 20 people in a big table. And this, and this has been a very, a very beautiful moment to, to have, a, no, to, to, because it's a, a way to help uh, people because we, the, 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 the commensals, <laughs> I don't know how to say in English. They pay for the menu, and so it's a it's a way to support people from the neighborhood, especially women from the neighborhood that they don't have all the resources, but they do cook. They cook very well, and and they are very very happy to share with uh, with others uh, the receipts. So after we we pub we publish them, we're recording all of them, and we well and it's makes part of our, of our program with the radio too. So it's a very um, important moment. And also now with food, we are, we are working a lot with, uh, we, we have a, a little shop in, in, in the house. That, and it's a place where we have to, where we want to, to show, uh, to show, to, to commercialize. Um, um, products of different producers of the of the of the villages of Madrid. So um, uh, we are doing all this all this uh, need with them, and they bring they they bring uh, they bring uh, uh, all all kind of food too. So then. Uh, for us, food relates the city with the with the country. It's um, a direct way to finally what what you have in the fridge. It's a way to you know to to explain how you know how you are related with the country. And for example, now we we are doing this uh, this camp for for kids at the end of the month. Um, it will be around food too. Every morning, every there are three days. So the first day we will eat from supermarket. The second day we will do we will go to the market, and the third day the producer will bring what has in this moment in in their fields. So for us, it's uh, well, yes, it's it's uh, because it, we are talking about rural and supporting the rural with the food. So it's uh, it's uh, essential to our. Well, yes, doing. Thank you, Emily, and let's hope that the um, norms that we have to implement don't spoil that um, aspect of England, because I think it's it's quite important as you as you are saying, because out of those <clears throat> big meals, uh, there are a lot of potentialities that come out as well. No, not in terms only of project, but also human relations hmm. and. Um, I would like to, uh, I mean, we, in the conversation we are having, and of course, where we have directed this conversation to, and Bina was saying now that she, she thinks that we will have to relate more to our neighborhood and work from there. Um, I wanted to ask you, and if you feel more comfortable not thinking about your institutions, but the arts, institution as an entity. How do you think that your institutions or the arts field can help work around the current state of things? Because we, you were um, talking about the growth, uh, the use of time, and I think the, the time we have uh, embodied during the pandemic has been a, a completely different one. And, I think that this is a real opportunity to maybe make things differently as an organization and as humans as well. Time is something that in other conversations has come up as well, like deaccelerate in a sense. But on the other hand, how do we serve our communities to be a safe space where, where we feel at home or where we feel um, that we can get to understand what's happening around us. Um, and as I said, you can, maybe you have already thought about it from your own institutions or otherwise, what's your opinion about what the institution or the art field, how can it help us uh, find that safe place and understand what is happening around us?
Um, yeah, like this, uh, yeah, maybe I uh, later I can send the image of this um, traveling farm museum on the bike. And it's covered with mirrors, so it's actually reflect the environment and then it has like strange sound attached to it. So like really people like gather around uh, as this museum is traveling. And I think as we keep moving and traveling, this would create some kind of common image of the neighborhood. So I think this is um, um, like uh, also uh, an artistic contribution that is uh, our power <laughs> to use. Um, but another is, uh, yeah, it's really um, overwhelming. Uh, there are so many calls and gestures for donation. Uh, it's impossible that we, we can <laughs> We can make donation to all the like necessary and desperate places. So, um, uh, as my own principle, I do with uh, donation for the community whom I'm like close with. Um, but this call for donations, I think, also um, suggests um, that. Uh, um, we, we um, if we are creating, if we in the field of art creating, I mean, if we in uh, the, f um, in the field where a uh, field of art with the community or art for the community uh, practice and suggest different kinds of economies and it could be uh, uh, exemplary. And, and can be well aligned with or well converged into a different economic system to be uh, practicing a broader uh, social realm. So how to like, because like uh, socially engaged art or community art still working in the similar domain to like, capitalist one you know subsidy wage free labor but would there be other way of distributing uh, resource including money and then recording it recording it uh, how do you call it? um yeah tracing those circulation and circulating uh, like supporting better circulation of them thank you Vina um Emily When you are asking about the institution, you are asking about our institutions, or like. No, I, I mean, uh, from an organization, from an organizational perspective, not like the administrative institutions, mm. but the artistic institutions, and that's why maybe as uh, inland, you have already thought of uh, how you can contribute to the community. Um, but if you haven't, maybe it's more like an opinion of your projection of how an art organization can help um, people feel they are being accompanied and they are knowing what's happening around us, right? Hmm. I th for, for us, for, for me, what is... How I feel is like, it's difficult, it's easy to say, but it's difficult to do it, is to let people to come in and let people to, to propose and to work and to apport to, to our project and to be part of it. For, for it can be for, for two hours or for three days or for longer, no? But I have the, the sensation that a lot of people in, in, in the neighborhood that has come, they, they have created a little link with us and they feel part of, of Finland with all that means, no? That being sensible to, to, the, to the country and to the, no? to the land and so, 
to just to have the doors open no and, and come and propose and for example the other day uh, um, uh, a, a guy came and he was very he was very concerned because I don't know if you know uh, los vencejos and this is uh, this uh, it's a bird that comes in this moment to 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 the city to Madrid and they they used to in the buildings they used to leave uh, holes to them to do their nets but uh, now with the, with the, uh, the repairing the buildings they are covering them so the vencejos they don't have any more a place to go to to do their nets so this this guy came and proposed us to do something in the neighborhood to alert the different um, uh, buildings not to not to cover these holes so together we start a conversation and we start um, a way to to know how to involve uh, uh, to do a little publication with the resource graphic to to put in the in the mailbox of, of of the of the different houses so i i really like this idea of be very open to these proposals and think together and to let the people to go before us. I mean, I don't know how to not to have a, la palabra, to have the first word. Yeah, it's always a bit difficult not to, to maintain the balances in, depending on where you want to position the organization sometimes. Um, one of the things that um, community-based projects have to face is the questions of how art is integrated into those programs, which I think uh, by now we, we can see that's um, not perfectly, but it's, it's, it is uh, noticeable. And I think that the art field is evolving in that sense as well. And when we talk about institutions, of course, there are many types of institutions and there's the big institution that has to keep on doing the big exhibitions and, and um, working as they have been working for years. Maybe they have to think about certain changes, but we have a big range and that's why it is interesting to see how art institutions can operate with from different perspectives. And I think the one that you've both given today, it is very much from my point of view, I think this is something that we have to um, take as examples in the sense of how we have, we can affect directly to the people that are around, but how to balance it with the artistic or aesthetic the strategies and perspectives which you have been working and one of the things we were talking about time um it's time on how we feel it how many events we we have to do and how much time of our lives takes the organization of a project or an institution or or an event but also i think there's another level of time on how how much time these um, projects need to uh, stabilize a little bit and make an impact. Um, and therefore, we would fall into uh, what Bina also was saying, that subsidiary, and, and you were saying as well, um, Emily, subsidiary system of funding boards that are funding maybe uh, other parameters of institutions. So uh, as a wrap up, um, and I want to thank both of you. So if you want to say something before we, we close, um, again, thank you. I think you are both very inspirational institutions and very inspirational professionals. So I think we should take a lot from here. But um, if you want to say something before we say goodbye. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. And um, we wait until September to see you all again. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Anne. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Vina. And see you in Utrecht. Thank you.